the next objective is to distinguish and sketch transverse and longitudinal waves. Uh, for a transverse wave, you displace the spring or medium up and down, but I want you to point in the direction that this wave is actually moving. Which way is the disturbance moving? So let's watch that again. Displace the spring or medium up and down. Which way is the disturbance moving? The displacement up and down, but the wave velocity is to the right in this demonstration. So this is why we call this type of wave a transverse wave. Trans means just like a transcontinental railroad or a transatlantic flight. What does trans mean? Across. So transverse wave velocity is perpendicular. It's perpendicular to the displacement of the medium. So if you're moving the medium up and down and the wave travels or propagates to the right, you've got a transverse wave. Here is a drawing of a transverse wave. It looks just like a sine wave. Now you can have different shapes of wave. You can have square waves, you can have triangular waves, but this is a very common type of transverse wave. It looks sinusoidal. What are the two things that are perpendicular to each other in a transverse wave? The velocity and the displacement of the medium. You're moving the medium up and down, but the wave's going to the right. Okay. The next type of wave is called a longitudinal wave. Now, in this kind of wave, you compress or pull, and notice that the wave also moves to the right. The displacement is right and then pulling back to the left. And notice that the wave, this little disturbance, also goes to the right. So your displacement, and we'll replay that one more time so you can see that, displacement to the right and then to the left, but the disturbance moves to the right. Now there's two parts of this disturbance I want you to see. There's the part where it's really squeezed together right there. There's also the part right next to it which is really pulled apart. Notice that this part of the spring is at equilibrium. It's under uh, no net force. But you've got parts that are squeezed and parts that are pulled apart, and those have important names. Let's go ahead and take a look at those right now. Longitudinal wave velocity, here's the mnemonic for this. It is along the same direction, i.e. parallel to the displacement. So the wave velocity, in this case, is parallel to the wave displacement, longitudinal along the same directions. So longitudinal wave velocity along same direction, i.e. parallel to displacement. This is harder to draw. What I'm going to draw is a part of the wave that is just normal. Then I'm going to draw a part that is all scrunched up together. And then I'm going to draw a part that's all spread out. And then a part that's all scrunched together and then it's spread out again. Um, now, when we're measuring a wavelength for this type of wave, well, first of all, we have to understand what these parts are called. This part right here is called a compression. That's where the spring or slinky is squeezed together more than normal. The part where it's stretched out more than normal right there is called a rarefaction. It's not a rarefication, it's a rarefaction. And that comes from uh, the term rarefied means spread out or thin. If you go up in the mountains, the air is rarefied. The molecules are farther apart than they are down here. In the same way, the coils of the spring are rarefied, they're spread out farther. If I want to measure the wavelength of this kind of a wave, I could measure from what to what? Compression to compression, so from here to there, from here to there is one wavelength of this, from compression to compression, or you could also measure from rarefaction to rarefaction. So that's how you get your wavelength of that kind of wave. I'm going to show you some more examples of these kinds of waves right now. I've got a couple of cool demos. So uh, we saw the transverse wave already. Uh, here is another example of a longitudinal wave. Uh, and this one, especially good example right here, is can be seen by this. Now, if you look at this demo right here, all these little dots, this is like an example that takes place in a gas. 
What do you suppose those little dots represent? Molecules. So those are the molecules. And now what I want you to do is look at this wave. And well, what do you call these parts that are all scrunched together? Those are compressions. What do you call the parts in between the compressions that are the molecules are all spread apart? Rare factions. Now, what's interesting is this, well, a couple things. This wave is caused by, this is a piston right here that's moving to the right and to the left, to the right and to the left repeatedly. That piston is just like a speaker. A speaker will do that too, move out and in and out and in. Now, an interesting thing is they've very uh, uh, nicely identified a couple of dots here. We can look at these dots. Now, you might think, oh, all the molecules are moving to the right. They are not. It may look like this sound causes molecules to move from the piston to over here. That is not what's going on. Look at the arrow, which is pointing to a red dot. And there's another arrow pointing to a red dot here. Those are particles. If you watch one particle, and they've made some of the particles red so they're easier to watch, but it's true of any particle. What is each individual particle doing in this, uh, this gas? It's just moving back and forth. It's moving to the right, then back to the left, then to the right, then back to the left. This red one's doing that. This one red one's doing that. But so is every particle. Every particle's doing that, moving to the right, moving to the left. They just made these red so we could see that. The particles are moving in what is called simple harmonic motion. They're just moving back and forth, back and forth. But the compressions, you can see the disturbance is what is traveling through this gas and starting here and ending up way over to the right. So you can see the wave velocity is shown by this right here where the velocity of the wave is moving to the right, although each, indiv each individual particle is just moving right, left, right, left, right, left, and never getting anywhere. Similarly, when I make a sound like this, no molecules from here get to your ear. It's only the disturbance that makes it to your ear. This is what your vocal cords are doing when you're talking. They're basically letting out puffs of air like pushing and pulling. And then what's hitting the, your friend's ear is the disturbance, the longitudinal wave. Uh, here's another example of a transverse wave right there. You can see that the displacement's up and down, but again, the wave is traveling to the right. For a longitudinal wave, the displacement is going right and left, and the wave is also traveling along the same direction, to the right in this case. Here's a comparison of transverse and longitudinal waves on a real live slinky from the PhysClips website. Let's contrast these. Here is a mainly transverse wave in a spring. The displacement y is mainly at right angles to x, the direction in which the wave propagates. Now here is a longitudinal wave in the spring. The displacement y is in the x direction, that is, parallel to the direction of wave propagation. This demo clarifies the meaning of the amplitude of a longitudinal wave. The demo shows a progressive or traveling wave caused by an oscillating piston. Let's start by looking at the displacement of the piston as well as the displacement of the particles. Now, in this low amplitude case, the piston's motion has a small displacement, and hence each particle also has a small displacement. If we switch it over to the high amplitude case, you can see that the displacement of the piston is greater, and hence the displacement of every single particle is also greater as it progresses through its cyclic motion. The other way to analyze amplitude is to look at how squished together the compressions are and how spread apart the rarefactions are. As you can see in this example, the compressions are not so squished together. But if I go to a high amplitude wave, now the compressions are really squeezed together. That's the same as saying that for a high amplitude longitudinal wave, the pressure of the compressions is higher and the pressure of the rarefactions is much lower as compared to a low amplitude longitudinal wave. What is critical to understand for both longitudinal and transverse waves is that the particles in the medium never actually travel in the direction of wave velocity, also called the direction of propagation. You see in this example from the FET 
www.colorado.edu website. For this example of a transverse wave, notice that the particles are only oscillating up and down. They never actually travel or propagate to the right. Every particle is just simply moving up and then down, up and then down in simple harmonic motion. It is only the disturbance that travels to the right. They're just oscillating up and down. It's also true for a longitudinal wave. The particles in the medium just oscillate left and right. Even though the wave may travel left or right, the particles never travel. They just oscillate back and forth. Transverse versus longitudinal waves. Uh, we just saw a couple of those. Let's list some examples. What are some examples that you might have experienced in your everyday life of transverse waves? Probably more if you live on a coast. So water waves, that is a transverse wave. Uh, now, if you're being a purist, it's not exactly a transverse wave, but, but for our purposes, it's going to be close enough. Uh, water waves are transverse waves. Another type of wave that you experience daily, you're experiencing it right now. Light is a transverse wave as well. Uh, in fact, all kinds of electromagnetic radiation are transverse waves. Longitudinal waves, that is when you mention sound, that is a longitudinal wave. You create a compression and a rarefaction. When a speaker goes out, it creates a compression. When it goes back in, it creates a rarefaction. That's a longitudinal wave. And there's also a, a kind of uh, earthquake wave uh, called the primary waves. P waves for earthquakes, those are compression waves. Uh, that's what happens during an earthquake. They ha there's both kinds of waves uh, during an earthquake. P waves, the primary waves, are the first ones you get. Those are compression. Uh, and also uh, S waves are the surface waves. Those are transverse waves. Uh, the P waves for earthquakes are longitudinal waves.